Feminism, we are told, makes a significant contribution to the social sciences. Feminism offers a unique and much needed contribution to our understanding of our shared reality. The unique insights we gain by viewing the world through the lens of feminism and feminist science is simply not possible with the more male-dominated, conservative and traditional natural sciences, often referred to by feminists as mainstream science. Colleges and universities have well-funded departments devoted to feminism, typically called women's or gender studies departments. These women and gender studies departments, over the last few decades, have shifted their focus away from issues of justice and equality and now have an ever-increasing interest in the sciences and science within these departments is viewed as a male construct. Mathematics is considered a product of male chauvinism and biology, particularly evolutionary biology, is denounced as sexist. In society there is no single feminist point of view and the term feminism is taken as describing a wide range of perspectives, but this is not reflected in gender or women's studies courses. In gender studies departments, a very narrow perspective has come to dominate. Within these gender studies departments, social constructionism has become orthodoxy because of the perceived need to see gender roles as a social construct rather than as a biological determinant. Such a view is necessary in order to further the feminist political agenda. The devaluation of facts, logic and even rationality itself, all of which are often dismissed or denigrated as masculine linear thinking by feminist scholars, this view of science as a corrupt and toxic product of the male mind is not driven by the feminists' devotion to truth, but rather a self-serving desire to leave themselves free to make any claim and that such claims should be left unchallenged. Women's and gender studies departments have presented a litany of unsubstantiated feminist theories. These theories have been taught to cohorts of young impressionable students. These students are ill-prepared to examine them because these notions are dressed as well-researched and properly documented feminist correctives to male prejudice. But feminism is a political ideology. The claim is that it advocates for equality, and this is how it is described in its dictionary definition. Political ideologies have no analytical utility. You may critique from an ideological perspective, but ideologies provide no objective analytical tools within their framework. To believe that they have such utility is at best foolish, at worst reckless, and very often dangerous. History is lessons to teach us about the consequences of conflating science and political ideologies. To say that the Nazi and communist science didn't end well would be an understatement. The consequences of allowing ideologies to warp and distort science is a matter of historical record. Soviet academies produced pseudoscience for decades, destroying genetics as a viable field of study for generations. Feminist science is simply Lysenkoism. The only difference is that the bourgeoisie is replaced with a patriarchy, but in its essential form, intent, and methodology, it is recognisable Lysenkoism. Universities in the West have for decades been incubating an alien and irrational ideology. Instead of studying gender issues, universities have been teaching feminism. This uncritical propagation of ideology is simply indoctrination. The opinions, ideas and beliefs of feminist scholars go unchallenged, unchecked and uncorrected. The product is that each cohort shaped by this system becomes ever more irrational and intellectually dysfunctional. In this series of short videos I will be taking a critical and unsympathetic look through the feminist lens. In the next video I will cover the feminist relationship with knowledge, often referred to as feminist epistemology. To end this video, just in case you might be harbouring the suspicion that all this is pure hyperbole, 
and that I engage in a polemical exercise, I will end with a short clip. I will leave it to you to interpret what you see and hear, listen carefully, and come to your own conclusions. Until next time, thanks for watching. We seem to be obsessed with this notion of male brain versus female brain. We seem to need to have an answer to this issue of nature versus nurture. Um, do, you, do you think we should not be obsessed by this question? Well, I think uh, we should not be obsessed by the question. Are we obsessed by the question whether there is a essential difference between people with light uh, skin color and dark skin color? Are we obsessed with this? This is not politically legitimate to even ask this question, is it? So why is it uh, legitimate to ask the question whether males and females are fundamentally different? And I think the only reason to ask this question, and this is why we are obsessed with it, is we want to say that there are uh, natural differences because this justifies the different treatment of males and females in our society. And so this is a problem. And I, I think it, it, it may be important for some things, like for example, for psychopathology or in medicine. But when we talk about behavior, there is no reason to look for uh, the reason for the differences because we don't need to justify them. So let's say there are differences and let's say even we have a, a, a basis, a biological basis for this. So let's say we find that males are indeed, human males are indeed uh, tend to be more aggressive than females. So what should we do with this, with this fact if we find it? There is no evidence for this in humans, but let's say it is true. So should we let men be violent towards other men and towards women? Or should we actually educate men better not to be violent? Uh, maybe we should just look, screen the population to people that are te have the high tendency to be violent, males or females, even if there are more males like this, and just, you know, give them special treatment not to be violent, because violence is not good in our society. And in fact, this is what we do. So we do not, uh, aggression, of course, is natural. We, if you look at any animal, if it is disturbed, it is aggressive. But all our society is built not to allow this natural aggression to, uh, to be uh, produced. So we educate our kids from a very young age, and when we are older, we have police, we have courts, we have prisons. Everything that we do is against our nature. But then we come to the sex differences, and then we look for nature, uh, for guidance. And we look for nature to allow these differences or to justify them. When in fact, even there, if there are a biological basis for these differences, we should act against these differences. So if we think that empathy is an important uh, quality in our human behavior, then if men are by nature less empathic, we should treat them to be empathic. And if assertion, be, uh, the ability to be assertive is important, then girls should be assertive too. This is why I think we are obsessed in this question just because we want to justify these differences. But this is a political issue. It's not a biological issue. Margaret McCarthy. Can